Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a really fun one on my crossbody bag collection. And I wanted to do a review on each because I've collected um, a fi have five crossbodies that I wear like regularly and they're all pretty much classic styles. And I wanted to give a quick review on each if you've been interested in, in the market for a new crossbody or you deciding which one to kind of invest in. I have some good styles here and I wanted to talk to you about the pros and the cons of them and which ones I like more. Um, I pretty much love them all, but there's definitely, you know, good and bad points to each one of them. I do have, you know, some tote bags here and there. I've sold most of them because most of them were like too heavy. I would put stuff in them and then they were like 10 times heavier. So I've really downsized to like crossbody bags and I find them so much more comfortable to carry and they're easier on my neck and easier on my back. And I find that I can like keep my hands free because I don't have to constantly be like holding a purse or keeping in like the crook of my arm. My arm gets so tired. So let's first start with, this is, I don't know if this was the first one I purchased, but it was one of the first ones I purchased. And it's by Sophie Hume, I think, H-U-L-M-E. So this is the envelope mini, I believe. I don't think it's the nano. I believe it's the mini, but I'll link all of them below um, the exact styles. This color is sold out because I bought it on sale a few years ago, but she always makes this style. First, what I what I loved about it is I just love the size. Like it was a really nice um, size. I don't, I can't get my full wallet in here. I have, I brought my wallet with me so I can, you guys can see what the size of my wallet is. I have like a standard, it's like an old YSL wallet. It's like a standard size, but it really, it can't really fit in here. So I do have to take everything out and kind of put it in either a smaller little card case or just like in the pockets here. So this is what it looks like. Um, the only thing I don't like is that this little, you know, the flap is supposed to be kind of in this little, you know, piece in the front, but it's so hard to get into. So I end up just pushing it into the metal, whatever, doesn't really matter. I wasn't sure about this color at first, but I have worn the heck out of this color. It's like this bright neon yellow orange, but I've absolutely loved it. But she makes a lot of classic colors. So when you open it, it is quite small, but it does hold a good amount of stuff. There is a little pocket back here that you can put your cards or your money in, hold your phone, keys, you know, the, the essentials. I like it because it is very sturdy. So it doesn't, a lot of my crossbodies are a little bit soft leather, so they begin to like sag or they begin to kind of change in shape a little bit. This does not. And you can take the straps off and use it as a clutch, which I think is genius. So really, really love that bag and wear it a ton. And I was surprised at how it hasn't gotten that dirty considering it's such a light color. All right, next is, I believe this was the first one I purchased before the Sophie Hume. And it's the Mansour Gabrielle bucket bag. This is the mini. So it is not the mini mini and it's not the large. This is the mini. Um, it's still quite a good size. I mean, it can, like my wallet can fit completely in it. I love, I have it with the red in the inside. What I love about this bag is I love the shape and I love the style. It's a very fun shape, very classic. I don't believe that it's ever gonna go like out of style. Even if bucket bags are not as popular, like it's just such like a clean finish that there's no, it's not super, super trendy, I feel. Now there are some downsides to the Mansour Gabrielle. I know they're like incredibly difficult to get. They are, the buzz I feel is dying down so you can finally kind of pick up some of the bucket bags. I got this from a store called Kirna Zabet, K-I-R-N-A, and then Zabet, Z-A-B-E-T-E. -E. I'll link it below. They're a boutique in Manhattan, but they also ship. But I was able to get it on their website actually when all the buzz was happening. Like none of the other websites have it. But the Kinner Zabetta is a small store. So and they actually get them quite regularly. So I was able to grab one. There are a few challenges with this. First of all, it's a rather bulky style. So it definitely will kind of like bounce against your body throughout the day, which can be kind of annoying. It you can never really close it fully. Like that's about as much as I can close it because the leather here to tie it is very, very stiff. So it, you know, you can't really tie like a nice bow with it. And it is just one like pocket, like one, you know, it's a bucket. 
So there's no pockets or any place to like separate your things. So it is kind of, you'll have to be looking for your keys and your sunglasses and your wallet. I mean, everything kind of gets lost in here. That being said, I still really, really enjoy, I just enjoy the style. I enjoy the color with the red in the inside. Um, I can't really wear it too much cross body because it's so like big and bulky. I sometimes can, but I wear it more just like on my shoulder. But still, I, I do wear it quite a lot. But if you are thinking about investing in it, it is not the most comfortable bag. So just know that. Maybe try the mini mini. There's even a smaller one. Or they make a flat cross body now, which is like a saddle bag. So beautiful, which I think would be really great. But I mean, I love the bucket style. Okay, next is the next bag I purchased was the Chloe Marcy Mini. So this is by Chloe and I got it in the shade tan. Um, love this bag. Took me a really long time to find this color because this color tends to sell out the most. But I had been on, I know there's like a lot of newer styles of Chloe. There's like the Drew and uh, I can't even remember all the names, but there's tons of newer styles. This is one of the older styles that they made but I have been wanting it for years and years. And I just thought it was such a, I love the color, I love the size. When you open it up, there is a pocket right here and then a pocket inside here. You cannot fit your wallet in or the size wallet that I have. Um, so you will have to kind of downsize and maybe put your cards and your money in that back pocket. Um, I like that it has that little front pocket there. I also like that you can, let me see, you can loop the little strap through this so it kind of closes it so it, it you know you can't really just flap it open especially if you're carrying it behind you or something someone can't just quickly open it and grab something um, it's very lightweight I keep the, the paper in it to hold its shape and I just love it I think it's a really really great bag it's held up really well I do hear though that it begins to sag a little bit and the, the bottom of the bag after some time. So I try to keep the plastic in it to hold its shape, but I just know that the leather is going to soften over time and it could, you know, start to change its shape a little bit. Either that, I mean, regardless, I still love it and I love the color especially. All right, this is a recent bag and this is the Gucci Soho Disco Bag. So it's got this cute little like fringe, which I thought was so cute. And I got it in the bright red shade, which I thought was just so like bold and bright. I love the red itself. Um, I have a lipstick, the lipstick that Gucci makes from their beauty line called Iconic Red literally matches this exactly because this is the Iconic Red Beauty or Gucci shade that's in their green and red stripes. You know, they do that like vibrant, vibrant red. Really enjoy this bag. One of my only downsides about the zipper is very tough. I don't know if it's just this bag or it's just the way all the Gucci zippers are for the disco bag. Just good to know. It is. It does take like some like pulling and I don't like to pull too hard because I don't want to like break the zipper or anything like that. So it's a pretty big size. I can, I keep the plat, the, you know, stuffing in it. I can get my wallet in it, which is great. Um, it just fits, like it just manages to get in there. There is a pocket in the back here and a pocket in the front. So, but I can get my wallet in here. I can get quite a lot of things in here and you can adjust, you can adjust most of these, but I really like that you can adjust this. I like to keep my crossbodies up a little bit higher rather than keeping them super, super low. And this is just, it's comfortable. It does, I've seen in other people that have had this purse before, it does begin to sag in the bottom. So that's the only thing, like it'll kind of begin to do that, which is a little, annoying but maybe if I put my wallet flat down at the bottom you know it'll stop that but regardless like I said I really love the shape of the bag it kind of lays flat against my body it's very lightweight and I love the color it just really it's a fun bag but it comes in a ton of different colors like black white gold I was thinking about the gold actually because I feel like gold is a neutral but I ended up with the red and I'm really happy with that okay this is my most recent bag and it is the Chloe Georgina, I believe. I'm like drawing a blank as to what it's called. I believe it's the Chloe Georgina. Like I said, I'll link all of them down below just so you can have a reference. And I got it in black. I was deciding between this and the Celine. The Celine it has like three pockets. There's three little 
black pouches kind of put together, three pouches put together. I was looking at it in black. But I went with this because they were both actually the same price. However, the Celine looked very bleh in black in that style. It just looked so basic and there was just nothing really to catch my eye. And for that price, I was like, no. And then I put this on and I really loved the gold hardware. I loved the gold kind of buckle here, the gold right here. And then it has the, you know, the, the Chloe um, name stamped right there. Now this bag I have loved. First of all, it fits my wallet completely. Like I can fully get it in there and close it. There is no pocket, however, in the initial pouch, which I kind of was bummed about. Um, and then it has this second pouch with a little, that you can put your phone. I put my lipstick in there. I can carry a good amount in here. I mean, the whole purpose of crossbody bags versus tote bags is you're not supposed to be carrying a lot. So I like, I don't want to have to pack it full of like unnecessary stuff. It forces me to like pare down. So, but I've really been enjoying this. I like that it snaps. I like that it closes and I love that it falls flat against the body. And for that, it's so easy to carry around and it doesn't kind of like bounce or anything like that. So highly recommend trying that out. All of them are very easy to wear, except for the Mansar Gabriel bucket bag. That's the most um, kind of cumbersome and it's really quite a, a large, you know, kind of bag. And I also wanted to um, end the video and give you guys a really fun kind of personal life update. And I wasn't going to do like a full video just dedicated to this because I don't want to like ramble on for 20 minutes, though I can. I know many of you tell me I ramble on way too long, but that's just me. I love to ramble. And but I wanted to just kind of tack this on to a video and give you some or give you a heads up that you're going to be seeing a lot of changes, especially like on camera and that sort of thing. This is all going to be gone because I am after 15 years finally leaving New York. <sighs> no, I'm, I mean, I'm happy. It's a very bittersweet thing because I feel, first of all, I've been in New York for 15 years. Let that settle for you. Let that, let that just sink in. And I'm not from the city. I am from the burbs, you know, down in like a beach town from Virginia Beach, Virginia, which is like eight hours south of here. And it's like the suburbs. So I didn't grow up in like a city atmosphere. My husband was born and raised in Brooklyn. So he, this is all he ever knows. But New York is one of those places that you either love it or you hate it. Like it is just not for you. It's very rare that you'll find someone that's like, meh, New York. Eh, I don't really have a feeling about it. People have very strong opinions of it. And to live here is very, it is very difficult and very amazing. So you will love it and you will hate it all in the same day, sometimes in the same breath. So, but I definitely knew I wasn't going to stay here forever. And, you know, it was very important to me to be near my parents. My parents are back in Virginia Beach down south. And that was very important to me because I would only get to see them over the 15 years. I mean, I would only get to see them once or twice a year based on my schedule, their schedule, how difficult it was. I didn't have a car. So I had Elmo at, for a good portion of the time. So it definitely became very difficult. And it was always our plan to kind of all come together. And we weren't sure where that was gonna happen. So we first thought about having them come up here to in the New York area, so not in New York City, but in the tri-state area. And we looked and looked and looked and we decided that we were gonna get two family home just because it was easier for all of us and um, to kind of be under the same roof, but have separate, obviously, residences. But that was what we had, you know, initially ideally wanted. Not for everybody, two family home, but there's something that we had talked about a long time ago and, and it was right for our family. But we just didn't find anything that we liked up here. Everything was either the price points were crazy for the size that you were gonna get, or it was too far from the city where the commute would have been like, no, that's not, that's not like an hour and a half, no. Um, especially because my husband works nights and I work, I work in, you know, my industry was always during the day. So for him, it would have been nearly impossible taking like an hour and a half, two hours to come home at like two o'clock in the morning. 
that would have just just been really difficult. So then we just decided where else are we going to go? And, um, you know, I'm someone that is very planned and structured. And this was a very, uh, not a very structured idea of where we were going to go. We just kind of were like, where in this country do we want to move? Because, you know, we wanted to all come together and find something that works. So we ruled out a bunch of different places. And then finally we decided to kind of meet in the middle and move outside of DC. So that I could get back to New York or my husband and I could both get back to New York within just a few hours. We can come up here regularly. His family's up here. I could come up here for blogging and events or whatever. And, but we're still um, kind of, you know, not up here in the tri-state area. We're a little bit further down south and it's in between actually my parents and myself. So that's about eight hours difference and we're meeting kind of in the middle. So it's about 30 minutes outside of DC. We'll be in Maryland. Um, we're having a home built, which is very exciting, but <laughs> this is where you're gonna see all the changes. But the home won't be ready until August or July, August and our lease is up March 31st. So Stan and I are gonna move <laughs> down with my parents and they've already sold their condo um, in preparation for this move and they're renting a two bedroom apartment, two bedroom, one bathroom, which the whole thing is just like hysterical to me and, and thank goodness we all get along. Um, so we're gonna be there for just a few months while the house is finished being built and you know, that's what we're, we're gonna do. And it's very, it's very different. It's a very big leap of faith for me, especially because, um, thank goodness I, you know, am good with finances and I'm a good saver because I've been saving for years and years and years. My husband always like, what are we saving for? I was like, I don't know, but when we know, we're going to be glad it's there. And because we're going to be kind of in a transition, we're not going to be able to work. Um, so we're going to, it's going to be this very different time in our life and we won't be finally in our house until probably, like I said, July, August. And so I came up with an idea and for my husband's turning 40 in um, just April 1st. So I suggested because we're at this like transitional time in our life and we'll never have a time like this again, I said, why don't we just hit the road for 30 days and like travel to all the places that we want to go. So that's what we're going to do. Um, in late April, early May, we're going to hit, we're going to do a road trip and just go all through the Southeast and hit all the cities, Charleston, New Orleans, we'll go to Nashville, Savannah. I mean, we're just going to do the, do anything, all that we can. And we're just going to try to do, you know, like some small hotels and Airbnbs and, you know, we don't have the budget to obviously like go crazy, but, you know, keep it within a good budget, but we definitely want to kind of you know, travel from city to city and we'll do that for about 30 days and, you know, we'll just never, I mean, my husband, like I said before, he works nights and I work days. And so for our entire relationship, I mean, we've never, ever had barely full days together. Sometimes we have just a few hours a week together. So it's very, it, this, this whole move is going to really mark a huge change for us, which I definitely think was needed. Um, I've loved living in New York and I've loved what I've done here and the life I created here. I mean, I grew up here basically. I mean, I came here six days after graduating college. So every major thing happened to me pretty much up here, but I definitely, you know, I think for after a while, and I could be very frank with you guys, I've left my job and I'm kind of now like in transition and it's been, you know, when you begin to feel like you're just on a treadmill, but where are you going? And that's what it began to feel like. We just kind of got in this routine of being on a treadmill and so to speak. And it just, we really, we knew that we needed a change and didn't know what that was. Um, I am not the biggest person to take risks where my husband is, but we, you know, so this was definitely a huge risk to kind of just up and move somewhere where we're not a hundred percent familiar. I mean, Meaning that like, you know, a job is moving us there or we're moving, let's say home to where all of our family is. And we've been there for, you know, we're picking somewhere new. And so, you know, it's a lot of unknowns, but 
I felt like we needed that. You know when you just need to get yourself out of your comfort zone, you need to push yourself almost out of your nest, so to speak, or that kind of routine that you've been on? Well, that's kind of where we are. And, but I'll still be blogging, so you'll probably see a ton more content, because I'll have a ton more time in the meantime. I'm not kind of sure what we're gonna be doing once we get there, and so that's a big unknown for me, which is kind of nerve wracking, but you know, from a health standpoint, I really was having trouble at my full-time job with my neck and back problems, so this couldn't have come at a better time and kind of allowing me to have a little bit of freedom to heal my body and allow myself to kind of get off that treadmill and because my body was just not, it was just not doing it anymore. So everything kind of, you know, came together at once, which I think was a great thing that the universe kind of, it all happened at once, my surgery and this move and um, having this kind of break in time between when our house is finalized or, or done and when we have to move. So I can't wait to share the trip with you guys. I'll be, you know, blogging all of that and definitely be doing, you know, recaps of places that we go and um, places that we, you know, stay and where we eat and all that kind of stuff. So before that, each place, I'll definitely be reaching out to you guys for suggestions and um, if you live in that part of the country and letting me know what are your favorite places. And like I said, you'll be seeing a lot of changes, especially with like backdrops and that sort of thing. But I'm really excited and I think it's gonna be a ton of fun. And I'm, like I said, you're gonna be seeing a lot more content because I'll be having a ton more time. Doing blogging and a full-time job was, I don't even know how I did it all, but it's, ma it's manageable, but it's difficult. So it's nice to finally have the time to kind of do some of the things that I really wanna do for you guys and so you'll be seeing um, like I said a ton more content and hopefully I'll try to get a post up every single day a few videos up a week and um, that's it so I wanted to share that kind of major update it's not even you know it is kind of major um, it's major for me at least so I wanted to share that with you guys so that all of a sudden when you saw a change in scenery you'd be like where is she what is she doing where is she is she still in New York so thank you for watching and I will talk to everyone soon okay Take care. Bye-bye.